Hey everybody out in YouTube land, my name is Mike and I love guitars. In today's video, we're going to be shifting focus from six strings to four and take a look at my Squire P bass. We're going to take a pile of upgraded parts, install them in this thing and see if it makes any difference. Will it sound better? Will it play better? Am I just an idiot who wasted a lot of money? Time will tell, so let's do this. Last year I posted a video where I took a Gibson LPJ and installed several upgraded parts that I picked up from stratospheareparts.com. That project was a lot of fun, and since then I've been thinking about what my next project would be. Well, several months ago I picked up this Squire P-Bass at a pawn shop for about 150 bucks. I wanted something simple and punchy for audio demos, but I also thought it would be a great platform for more upgrades. Before we get started on the space, I want to point out that this is not a sponsored video. I paid for all of these parts myself, and most importantly, all views expressed in this video are my own. I made a list of all the parts that I wanted, and I went to Stratosphere. And that's where I hit my first snag. Stratosphere didn't actually have everything that I wanted. I did manage to get a Fender USA high mass bridge, USA neck plate and strap buttons, and made in Mexico tuners because they were out of USA tuners. Unfortunately, they were also out of loaded pit guards, which I just wanted for the sake of simplicity. For that reason, I ended up going with the DiMarzio Model P replacement pit guard. Now, unfortunately, those are only available in black, and I really would have preferred white. I just don't know how black is going to look on this blue body, but who knows? Maybe it'll end up looking really cool. Now, some of you are probably asking why I would buy such a cheap base and then spend more money on upgrades than I did on the base itself. Why wouldn't I just buy a nicer base to begin with? Well. Modding and upgrading guitars is just fun. It is. And even if I bought a slightly nicer bass, it wouldn't come with the really cool parts like the high mass bridge. Okay, with all of my twisted logic explained out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and start installing all the parts in this thing. I'll record audio demos before and after the upgrade so we can see if that makes any noticeable difference whatsoever. The bass itself will plug directly into my audio interface, and since I don't have any fancy bass amp plugins, I'm going to use the default Cubase bass amp plugin running an Ampeg SVT simulator. Also, let's be honest, I am not a bass player. I'm a guitar player, so don't expect anything amazing here. $150, this bass is not bad. Honestly, I never gave it a good setup, so it's not the easiest bass in the world to play, but it's not terrible. It sounds decent and it's filled the role that I needed it to, but I'm just hoping to get a little more out of it. So, let's slap some parts in this bad boy and see if I'm a genius or an idiot.
Well, all of the parts are now installed, though several compromises were made out of necessity. I'll talk about those compromises in a minute, but first, the most important question. After installing all of these parts, did I hear a big difference between the before and after recordings? If I'm being completely honest, no, I really didn't hear much difference at all. I really wanted there to be this big in-your-face difference between the stock import parts and the much more expensive USA parts, but I really just couldn't convince myself that my ears were hearing something that wasn't there. Maybe if I had more high-end monitors, I might be able to hear a bigger difference, but on my Yamaha HS5s, all I can really say is that the bass tone just seemed a little more rounded out. It's very subtle, and I really doubt you guys will be able to hear it once the YouTube compression is applied. It's not the end of the world though. I did legitimately need a new set of tuners on this bass as the original set was missing a few parts. The B string tuner was literally held together by string tension and would completely fall apart every time I changed the strings. The strap locks are also something that I was always gonna install anyway, just as a matter of personal preference on pretty much all my guitars. And even though I could have gotten them individually for much less money than on a loaded pick guard, at least I now have knobs for my volume and tone pots. Everything else is just icing on the cake. Expensive icing, but nice icing. Now, about the compromises I mentioned. As you might have noticed, the pit guard is still white. That's because I had to transfer all of the parts from the DiMarzio pit guard to the original pit guard due to placement differences between the Squire and the Fender P-Base. I'm specifically referring to the input jack. Apparently, the Fender P-Base routing near the input jack is just slightly different than the Squire, and the DiMarzio pit guard wouldn't fit due to the input jack hitting the side of the cavity. As a result, the screw holes in the pit guard wouldn't even come close to lining up with the screw holes in the body. The strangest compromise I came across was having to use the original neck screws. Apparently, the Fender USA neck heels are thicker than the Squire heels, and I quickly realized that if I used the USA neck plate screws, they would end up going all the way through and coming out the fretboard on the other side. On the headstock, I had to keep the original tuner bushings as the replacements were a larger diameter and would have required reaming of the headstock to install. I also had to scramble to find some foam to go underneath the new pickups as the foam underneath the original pickups was just falling apart. Not sure if all P-Base pickups are like this, but the pickups are mounted directly to the body and use foam instead of any kind of spring to keep pickup height correct. Luckily, I was able to find some extra foam and got everything working.
Well, now that it's all finished, how do I feel about these upgrades? If I'm being honest, I could have just replaced the falling apart tuners, added strap locks, and just stopped there. There are some very minor tonal differences with the other parts, but really just not enough for me to completely justify the money I spent. I'll just have to chalk this one up as an experiment with a less than ideal result. I don't want this to discourage anyone else from modding or customizing their instrument though. Even if you don't always get the result you're hoping for, tinkering with your guitar is a lot of fun and can help you understand how the instrument works. Just don't go taking a hacksaw or a drill to it unless you really know what you're doing. Well, that wraps up another video. If you have modded or customized any guitars, tell me about it in the comments below. I'd love to compare notes with you guys. Ha! Finish another one. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you liked it. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing, and I'll see you in the next video.